Welcome to Overtime and Inferno, your weekly roundup of all the big stories in CSGO, quicker than Daps' Valorant career. A quick reminder to rate and review us at the beginning, at the end of the episode, not the beginning. It really helps us. Oh, I'm beginning. Logan. <laughs> this is AZS. Yes. Today, we're going to be talking about Gambit winning things. This new again. Stockholm, <laughs> again, the new Stockholm Majors uh, complication, Daps in at the EG head coaching position, the mysterious disappearance of hyenas Waxix's possible new team sadik is being back in counter-strike and how many stairs are in the eiffel tower who <music> things a little bit differently here today yeah first you're, of all uh, <laughs> you're in a more blue place than usual i i mean my room's normally blue it's just a darker blue than normal uh, yeah sure yeah, uh, I, I'm I'm in an alternate location today because of some uh, plumbing issues, and I literally mean plumbing. Uh, <laughs> it's not a euphemism, even it's though it's not does a euphemism like at all. It just really does. Um, yeah, so I'm recording from my sister's room today with a different microphone. And on it my explains laptop. the pictures of I assume Marilyn Monroe on the wall behind you. Yeah, it's the Andy Warhol pictures. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. So how how how's everything going for you right now? It's all right, man. Um, you know, I had a, a bit of a strange week, but I'm back, and it's like Tuesday again. So the the time just keeps going. Like that's that's how life works, you know. You sort of just move past the weird things that happen, and then you're just back to monotonous. <laughs> you're back Got to it. monotonous. So you're like just finishing up your quarter life crisis now, right? Essentially, yeah. Okay. Um, that that pretty much well i'm <laughs> in the final throes of it i would say okay. all right let's get into counter-strike uh we, we've got we have a lot to talk about today like a weirdly large amount of things to talk about uh let's first talk about how gambit won things again gambit just keep winning man they just didn't they just don't lose like it's absolutely crazy they like, They've lost like one map of the last fifth, like uh, sorry, one series of the last fifteen. They've lost four maps out of the last twenty or something. It's actually insane. They just don't lose. They yeah, just, I think, it's just incredible. I think I saw some stats the other day from uh, whoever does stats for HL TV. I couldn't tell you who it is off the top of my head, but basically, it's like four teams have won a series in the last six months against Gambit, and the only one that really matters is FPX. That's it. Because it's like the other ones were like they've won. Or maybe it was like above a 50% win rate. Regardless, it was four teams. One was Vitality, but they didn't done it once. Yeah. And it was like FPX did it twice or something like that. It was it was it was scary to look at. Yeah. I mean, the only game they've lost in the last two tournaments was when Zywoo dropped like 107 ADR. It's like the one game they've lost. With Zaiwu hard carry. Like, Zaiwu can just do that sometimes. That's just what he does. That's the one game they've lost in two tournaments. They've dropped four, I think, four maps in two tournaments. It's ridiculous, man. And two of them were to Zaiwu on his own. The other one was to Navi, which is simple. You see, like, they either get, like, smashed by simple or Zaiwu, or they just don't lose. It's, it's actually insane. They just. They're five and zero in the last two grand finals, in maps. They won three zero against OG, two zero against Navi in the grand final. They just they they don't choke in grand finals of anything. They get better. Hobbit is like the most insanely like he's the most big game player we've like we've yeah. seen in a long time. He's just every big game he performs, every big game. Yeah, every single one. Um, and he so Hobbit got MVP right after the tournament and immediately tweeted, nah, this goes to Shiro or well, uh, in, in much more like formal English, but like, nah, this goes to Shiro. He's a beast. Um, <laughs> I don't like that, bro. Nice guy. Hobbit. How can you not like, it's nice like, guy Hobbit? come on. We, it's like, well, a Shiro gets enough fucking plaudits. <laughs> Everyone knows Shiro's good. Let's give it to the guy who actually doesn't like, you know, bait his entire team for a start. B, it, it's like faux modesty. We all know Hobbit was like probably the best player at this tournament. Hobbit was unbelievable. 
and you actually get MVP, deserved MVP. Hobbit, I, if I'm not mistaken, it's not. It's one of like his first MVPs as well. Like he didn't get many because Adren got it for the major they won. It's nearly always Shiro or Axile. Like just take the MVP, man. Like you were a monster. Like stop just being take modest. It. Just take it. Like just Shiro gets <laughs> plenty of MVPs. It's not like he doesn't need this. It's not like if Shiro had won it, had gone. Actually, I think it's Hobbit because that I could be like, yeah, fair enough. I think you're being a little bit fake modest, but. Yeah, he probably does deserve it, and he doesn't get many plaudits, so that's probably fair. He's giving mm. it to Shiro. It's like, yeah, I think this guy's underrated. <laughs> hey, what world is he underrated? Nonsense. Um, I, I think we have to talk about this again. I'm pretty sure we talked about it like five times already, but fuck it, we'll talk about it again. Hobbit's career arc is ridiculous. Yeah, it's great. Going from winning a major to disappearing off the face of the earth for three years to becoming... I, I can't even say one of the best players on the best team in the world because truly it's like Axile and Shearer that are up the there best as, team the as the best players on the best team in the world. But Hobbit is, I, I at this point, I'd be willing to say he is the best big game player in he's, the world. Yeah, full he, he's stop. the most clutch player. Not as in good at winning clutches, as in he, he is. is clutch. He is yes. big game, big moments. He is clutch. He, I mean, even in the major final that when Gambit won it, the only moment I remember from that final is Hobbit winning a 1v3 from... Uh, from, from Grill on Inferno. It's Paul, right? I always know it as Jenny, and I don't know why. I'm not going to go off on a tangent here. I've always known it as Jenny, because all of my friends call it Jenny, and I don't know why. It's like Paul or whatever you want to call that little corner. And he wins like yeah. a 1v3 from there. And that's the only moment I remember from that final. Yeah, um, like Sadik is yelling, same angle, like seven times. Same right? angle! Same angle! Same angle! Yeah, that one. Um, <laughs> that's all I remember. And even then, he was like a big game player, and now he is the most big game player. And he's a big part of the reason that this team is still just like still winning every grand final. They only drop games in group stages, so it's not his fault. <laughs> it's just not a big enough game for him, man. <laughs> yeah, it's like yeah, it's, just, it's like it's like Italy at any international tournament or Germany. It's, it can't be asked at the group stage. I just wait till playoffs. Or perks in League of Legends. <laughs> I feel a little unfortunate for Navi here. Um, they had to play a best of three against G2 and then immediately turn around and play a best of three against Gambit. Um, yeah. That's rough. That's, it is. <laughs> but I mean, I mean, who among us hasn't played, you know, five maps back to back for Counter Strike? Okay. Me and my well, friend it's, once it's played. <laughs> Me and my friend once played, I think I played 14 and he played 15 in one day. He had the day off uni. I might have had the day off uni, I don't remember. <laughs> um, but either way, I played 14 games of Counter-Strike in one day. You know, it's doable. I mean, okay, I wasn't playing at the same level, but... But still, yeah. Five, six maps of Counter-Strike isn't that bad i mean i understand the stress and and all that is is pretty difficult and the fact you don't have much time to prep it is a real concern i, I played but. a best of one valorant tournament about two months ago i played yep. one map i played one game of split right when into oh god i, I play split agree. as well i played in we played to double ot and my entire team was so absolutely exhausted after the first game <laughs> We had, we won it, and we had to go play another game. And the second game, we were just like, "I'm so fucking tired, man." <laughs> I actually think casting two best of threes back to back is harder than playing two best of threes uh, back to back. Done casting a best of three, extremely tiring. Cannot imagine doing two. Yeah, uh, that's <laughs> what I mean. Like, I I casted a best of three once. I was like, "This is really hard. I'm absolutely exhausted after two maps. Like, this is not easy." I I did a best I played of... loads of CS in a day. Like, I did a best of five cast. Extremely unfun. <laughs> yeah, that sounds difficult. I mean, obviously, I've worked long days, but when yeah. you don't have to speak all day, it's a lot easier. You you sort of take mental breaks. Exactly. I, I, I don't, obviously, but you could if you wanted to. <laughs> um, let's talk about the rest of the teams over there. I, I really want to talk about Navi, who did decently well against G2, and then, as per usual, choked in the finals. Um, Navi are the second best team in the world. 
but it's like they're the second best team in the world by default because <laughs> nobody's anywhere near Gambit. So it's like you just sort of give it to Navi because who the fuck else are you going to give it to? You don't. Nobody else even comes close. Like nobody comes close to yeah. beating Gambit except like Vitality, and then lose to everyone else. So it's like I, I don't know. They are the second best team in the world, and they keep finishing second at events. But like, I, I have no idea how good this team actually is because, I mean, I guess they're pretty consistently getting to second, third, fourth, which is, I mean, any level of consistency is good for Navi. Yeah, really. any level. Because they've consistently just not been consistent. Consistent. Yeah. Uh, there. I mean, the rest of it. If you just look at the tournament standings, if you if you just told me the eight teams that were here, I could have told you the standings, and it went exactly as you imagine. It's uh, Gambit one, obviously Navi second, G two third, NIP fourth, Complexity and Big fifth to sixth, Phase and EG seventh to eighth. There's no surprises yeah. there, and I, I made this point on Twitter that we were sort of told at the start of the online era that there would be, you know, it's not consistent. You can't be consistent online. Like, it doesn't happen. Well, this tournament was all online and it went exactly as you'd imagine. Like, these teams have been consistently this level for a while now. I, I really don't think LAN will make that big a difference to who the good and bad teams are. Yeah, I, I've been seeing... I not i've been seeing i saw right a lot recently on will gambit be good when we come back from the online era when we get to cologne and we're and the answer is absolutely yes there's i don't think there's a question whether gambit will be good when we come back at this point because if you if you if this was like big right and you won like two events in a row in the beginning of the online era and you're like ah it's big gonna be good online i'd probably say no they're they're you're all over the place. Everyone's moving shit around. They they happen to be in the same place, right? They're able to get boot camping in, even though it's like right at the beginning of COVID. Like, this isn't going to be stable. And guess what? It wasn't stable, right? But this Gambit team, this has been like six months of this now. It's been ridiculous. And and they just, they, as you said, they don't lose maps. If anything, the longer they've been at the top, they've just gotten better. The the only question you can possibly have is, would they have been this good if they hadn't started online? Which I think is fair. I think at this point, we've been playing online and they're just going to get on LAN and they're just going to go, well, we already know we're better than these. There's no, you know, yeah. there's no stress really. Whereas had they started on LAN, they might not have been so like, you know, they might have struggled at first before they got here. Mm-hmm. Um, but because it started online, they sort of were just coasting the whole time. But now they're here. I don't. I just. I don't know. I don't see how anyone could suggest they wouldn't be the best team in the world on LAN right now. Yeah. I, I think the only way they wouldn't be the best team when LAN comes back is if something dramatically changes between now and then. Rather than like if this tournament was a LAN tournament, they'd have won it by a landslide, a landslide as it were. Um, <laughs> I mean, we have a player break. Right after yeah. land, so like, yeah, so that might change it. But I mean, this team is just so far ahead of the competition. It's, it's yeah, just, it's ridiculous. It's ludicrous. Um. All right, let's let's move on. Let's move on. We've got the other horse elephant in the room. Um. And by elephant in the room, I mean Sweden. Uh. So long. Long story short, here. Uh, the Dota team put out a tweet linking to an article yesterday, basically saying that throughout the entire process of Valve trying to get majors for both uh, major for Counter Strike and the international for Dota into Sweden, that the Swedish government basically continuously assured Valve that hey, when we get around to voting if esports is a sport and good to be excluded from the other stuff, you guys are going to be good. Everything will be fine. Vote went through yesterday. It failed to bring esports in as a sport, which means exclusions do not apply. So that entire article or thing basically came down to like, yeah, we might not be able to hold the international in Sweden. So we're looking for alternate venues. So they haven't put anything out for Counter-Strike yet, nor did but, any of us expect anything to be put out for Counter-Strike yet. But HLTV but, have suggested that it might still be in Sweden. HLTV is suggesting it might still be in Sweden. I 
truly question not th- 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 how that's going to work if Dota can't be in Sweden, but it seems to be that there's a possibility that this major might not happen in Sweden, but there's always the possibility of other countries basically welcoming people. I mean, Germany's welcoming people for Cologne. Maybe the major just won't have an audience, if that makes sense. So I will um, say that Sweden has a greater legacy in Counter Strike than they do in other games, right? This might be that might genuinely be why you know the government is used to like Counter Strike is quite a big part of the like Sweden are a big part of Counter Strike history, and Counter Strike is a big part of it's like the only thing Sweden are elite in. Like seriously. I say the same about Denmark as well. Obviously, they won a European Championship back then. But like, apparently, they're quite good at handball as well. But like, it's a chance for these, like, for smaller European nations to actually be good at something. And like, Denmark and Sweden really sort of grabbed that and were genuinely like elite at it. Mm-hmm. So it makes sense, really, that they would be on board for it. Uh, obviously, the the production team over in Sweden as well, like the level of production is always good there as well. Um, so, but they've always been record. I mean, they obviously had the you know NIP were sort of not superstars over there, but they were more famous there than they are in a lot of co- like esports stars over there are a lot more famous mm. than they are in other countries. I mean, the same with Reckless, right? Um, so I think it makes more sense for them to allow a Counter Strike tournament because they actually do see it as an elite level sport because they're good at it. In the same sense, that, you know, maybe England wouldn't allow a big. Uh, I don't know, like handball tournament. But if it was football, they'd be like, yeah, no, this is an elite sport because we're better at it. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Basically, quick TLDR. Everything's up in the air. That, and it, as I just it, said to some Swedish friends of mine, their football team is still starting Seb Larsson in 2021. And they're trying to claim other sports aren't elite. So, I mean... If if that's elite level sport in Sweden, perhaps Dota is elite, and CS definitely is because they're much better at CS than Seb Larsson is at football. I'm gonna pretend like I get this joke, and we'll just continue from there. Um, <laughs> Somebody will get it. It's not even a joke, really. Like Seb Larsson, I love Seb Larsson. He was a great footballer in 2008. I've seen, you know, he used to play for my football team. I love Seb Larsson, but he's also like 38 now. And he shouldn't be playing international football. Yeah, he should come to America. Isn't that where all the the football players go to when they're old? A lot of the, yeah, a lot of good famous ones do. But like he went back to Sweden, you know, his hometown, and plays there. His hometown, his home country, and plays there. You get you get a decent level of footballer sometimes. Hey guys, quick note from the editor's desk. As you may well know, we've been running a promotion for the last couple of months um, for referral for our podcast. If you go into the description below, there's a link where you can refer three friends and you can unlock three uh, a bunch of CSGO stickers shipped to your house. We have our first set of people getting shipped their stickers now, including Arthur, Musty, and Spencer. So if you're one of those people, look out for the stickers coming. And if you're not, it's easy enough to just refer three of your friends and then you'll be on in the line to get the CSGO stickers. All right, back to the podcast. All right, let's move on to the XQ. We have a lot of, we have a lot of stuff today. Uh, yeah, it's some fun for, First thing we want to talk about is adapts because Valorant career is over. It's actually been over for a little while. Um, I believe he was on NRG for Valorant, and then he got kicked in, you know, normal Daps fashion. Um, and it's back to Counter Strike. He's now the head coach for the Evil Geniuses after Zeus left two weeks, uh, three weeks, six, an amount of weeks ago. Um, I'm excited to see Daps coaching, and he's finally working with Stannis Law. Yeah. So like. Instead of just building this, like he used to just build the system and then Stanislaw would take over, he now gets to build the system so that Stanislaw can take over. It's like it's perfect. It's great, but it's it's a little bit of a you know Stockholm syndrome. It's like this guy keeps abusing you, and now you're going back to work with him. Like, yeah, I mean here. So our next question is: Does this matter at all? And the answer is, I'm... I don't, <laughs> I don't think so. How much does co- do coaches matter? I have no idea. But if anyone's going to be a good coach for an NA Counter Strike team, it's going to be Daps. Yeah, there's like 
I, I can name like two or three players that I think would be really, really good coaches. And Daps is one of them, right? Yeah. Like he, he was essentially a coach anyway. Yeah. He was a coach not that to was be, just a Not to say he was necessary. like bad or anything, but ah, come on. Yeah. He, he was always a low impact fragger in most games. He had pop-off games, but even his pop-off games were like, you know, okay. He was more Zeus than he was, you know, blame F. Let's put it that way. Yeah. Uh, hyenas. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. Like, I'm asking people. I'm getting, like, drip-fed little bits of info. I've been told that it's going to be good information for me. What, like, to, to, I'll take a step back. I was just say, let's if, give some context. They forfeited their last two games at no sweet or spring sweet sweet spring whatever it's called um and been very coy about it not said anything that's going on um endpoint who they were supposed to play put out a tweet saying uh, maybe the pack should have stayed together and uh the hyenas manager has just been sort of dropping hints like oh yeah no i can't tell you what's going on but but azsk will be happy about it and i'm like don't know what that means. So I figured like maybe AZ had been signed somewhere to another team. And then it was like, and I asked somebody else, they were like, I don't think um, AZ has been picked up. I think he's staying. So I don't know what the hell is going on. I've got no info and I don't know whether or not to be, I don't know if like hyenas are splitting up. I don't know what the hell is going on, but it's, I mean, it's kind of fitting really that the new North, as soon as they start having any kind of, performance it's just turmoil that's yeah that sounds about right yep <laughs> all right so yeah do, do we have any we we have zero ideas of who's going anywhere and we have zero ideas of where said person is going right we've no yeah i don't know if i don't know if there's zero information like, like maybe they're just signing somebody else maybe they're like bringing in a in-game leader or something i don't know maybe they're Bringing in like AZ's best friend, I've literally no idea, and they, they just they just won't tell me. The the manager is even like taunting me. Like I, I tweeted that like, somebody's got some info. Somebody tell me, and he like he like uh, private messaged me like, "Yo, do you want you want to know what's going on?" I was like, "Yeah, hit me." He was like, "I can't." I'm like, "Oh yeah, brilliant, <laughs> thank you." I've got no idea, no idea what's happening. All right, um, Waxik said he's coming back. He's got an organization. He's looking to grind for Counter Strike, and he's now looking for like somebody to sign his team. Um, there's maybe AZ's on that. Maybe AZ's on that. There, there, okay, so there's been some rumors about this team that um, it includes like Calix, which I mean, kind of expected, but sort of. But there was always a rumor kind of. those who didn't like each other, and that was the reason what never joined space never joined space soldiers in the past. Supposedly, I mean, Supposedly. Uh, nobody can ever confirm it. But the big one that we saw on this list, and again, this is a very theoretical list, right? Like, we have absolutely no confirmation on this list. It was probably started in some deep, dark HLTV form and made it to onto Twitter, which is just about how the all the people of HT- HLTV would never lie. <laughs> never. Um, had Xantares on the list. Yeah. Which is interesting for many reasons. Was, so the, the team was Woxit, Calix, Xantares, and Emor. I. More, I don't know how to pronounce it. I'm almost certainly butchering it. And then a blank space on the fifth. Now, this team would be really, really exciting in 2018. Like back <laughs> when Space Soldiers were climbing and it was like Jean Tarez and Calix as the duo. I always thought Paz was super underrated. Paz is a yeah. monster, at least was back then. Um, <clears throat> but now it's like Woxic's been on a bit of a downswing. We we sort of know how good Jean Tarez is now. He's pretty, you know, hot and cold. Mm-hmm. Calix, I don't know what Calix we, we has been doing the last two years. Like, I have no idea if that well, he's good or not. He did envy, which is yeah. I mean, he kind of fu- he's kind of fucked his own career up a little bit, but yeah, he keeps joining like these doomed rosters. He keeps joining like envy and um, gorillas and stuff. Like these rosters just doomed from the beginning. A bit like Mihu actually before he's joined EG. I and mean, even then, EG looked pretty fucking doomed. Um. It's like he's like just the player you go to. You don't have anyone else. So like, this guy was good in 2017. Um, yeah, I don't know. Um, there's also no talk on the fifth. 
I, I would like to see Paz just for like old time's sake, but I think he's on Sangal or Sangal now. Yeah, um, with Major and Engine X. I think my boy uh I think my boy's on that team. Let me have a quick look. I, I think he is. Yeah. Um, my man Enishan. Oh no, Enishan's not on that team, but Sensei is a guy I played with on North Ultras. I don't know what happened to Enishan. Maybe he's on this team. A friend of mine. Maybe. Um but yeah, I, I mean, it's kind of fun to see Woxic back because obviously he's gone quiet since the the, the fall of the Colossus. All of them have, actually. Mezzi's on like endpoint, but like Alex yeah, is I, I feel like Mezzi's doing well on endpoint too. Yeah, almost certainly. He's a good player. Yeah. Um, and the last little bit that we have is Sadikis is back in Counter-Strike. Currently, as we speak, uh, us North Americans woke up to a great surprise this morning, which was Mr. Betway himself tweeting... Sadikis is back on the desk uh, with a quick video. Gamers Without Borders is going on right now. Um, and, uh, you know, all the charity show matches. And Sadikist is hosting the desk for that. It's it's nice to see his face back. It's nice to hear his voice back. It's it's nice for Sadikist to be back. Um, that, that That's all we really have on it. Just more of a wanted to mention kind of thing. Um, yeah, I mean, Sadikist obviously left for... You know, left under a bit of a cloud. I think all is mostly forgiven now, right? Yeah. I, I know, a... so for some people, what you know, the things he said won't be forgivable. But you know, that's, yeah. that's you don't forgive him. I, I sort of understand you. I mean, but for a lot of people, it's just nice to see a man sort of do what he's good at. However, there is a bit of controversy around gamers with borders, right? Yes. <laughs> Obviously, it's sponsored by the, the Saudis, I think. Um, and, and Thorin was, you know, stirring up some controversy on Twitter. Um, sort of having a go at Frankie, seemingly unprovoked uh, for some, like, year-old drama or something. And then Frankie was forced to respond that it's all a bit messy. Like, conversation that probably shouldn't have happened in public. Um, so I don't really want to comment too much on it because it's... You know, it's it's not really worth commenting on, but it, it exists if you want to go and look up uh, Thorin and then Frankie's response that for some reason happened in public. Yeah. All right, let's move on to overtime, where our first question is actually a strong series of questions. Um, yeah, so from- this was from last week from, from Vu. Uh, I promised to answer this week because we missed it. Uh, it was, you know, bad timing last week. Uh yeah. Um so top five Taylor Swift songs. Um I'm gonna have to defer to you on this. I really so, don't like Taylor Swift. I don't like Taylor Swift to Hijon either, but all too well slaps that surprises regardless me. of how you do that. I really thought you'd be a bit of a Taylor Swift stand. We we've we've been over this, nah. It's yeah, I know, but rock, I still man. can't believe it. I, I still think you're uh, you're you're putting on a brave face. Nah, it's so it's all too well, and then four all too well covers that I don't know. <laughs> I mean, it's tru- all trouble's well, all right, just... I suppose. A shake it off is obviously awful. Yep. I mm-hmm. uh, I I don't know enough about Taylor. I Swift. mean, here's the thing though. Okay, so the reason why I like all too well, or I started to like it, was because I saw uh, a Tumblr thread talking about the lyrics in it because she says "dancing in the refrigerator light." And somebody went through and did the math on how much it costs to dance with refrigerator doors open to get the light from it. And I thought it was the fucking funniest thing. And so I had to listen to the song. And then I was go- I was about to ask who has enough time to work this out. And then I remember that a friend of mine has a spreadsheet saved on his computer for doing like dumb mathematical equations. Like one of them he has is um, if you jumped and fired a Barrett 50 cal from the hip, how far back would you go? And I can't remember how far it is because it's all obviously based on the, the weight of the person firing. But like he, he like really went to town on working this out. So I guess this this people have this sort of uh, burning passion to do maths. There's a whole subreddit called uh, They Did the Math. It's great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it should be They Did the Maths, but... How many stairs do you think I think are in the Eiffel Tower? I I reckon 
So I have no idea. Like, it's just so I difficult. Don't know, the I don't know how many I think are in the Eiffel Tower. <laughs> so I'm gonna say like I don't know, ten thousand. I said two thirty-eight. Like two hundred. It's got to be more than two. It's massive, man. It's huge. I, I guess don't think it's... I don't know. I don't know, man. I don't know. There's a lot of stairs. Really no a... idea. Let's just go zero. Yeah, let's go. I like zero. No stairs. It's just a. It's just a lift. Uh, did we know that pandas aren't bears? So, <laughs> I I knew that koalas weren't bears. Yeah. So I assume it's the same deal for panda. I assume they're marsupials. <laughs> because, that, like, it makes sense, right? Because bears are uh, carnivores. They eat fish, right? I guess pescatarian, if you're... But they're, they're carnivores, bears. They eat other animals. Whereas pandas eat, like, bamboo and... And sit around and don't do anything. Pandas are great. I assume they're marsupials because koala bears are also marsupials. They, uh, it looks like some people are categorizing them as like raccoons. Raccoons, interesting. Yeah, but apparently recent DNA analyses show that they're closely related to bears and red. That pandas are mostly create more more closely related to pa- bears and red pandas are more closely related to racco- raccoons. So it depends on the uh, the panda, I guess. So, <laughs> well, I say I knew about koalas because there was a, like back. At, this is like a few years ago, and I don't know why I remember this. But there was a guy who on this like website about FIFA just used to spam all the time talking about koalas being marsupials, and I saw it so often that it just stuck in my head, and it's just like a fact that I have now, just have it on hand. <laughs> It might not even be true. I've never fact checked it. Uh, <laughs> all right. Well, we should probably fact check that. But whatever. Yeah. Uh, War Owl or Three Clicks Philip? War Owl. Yep, I agree. I, I I never really watched Three Clicks Philip. I did originally watch War Owl back in the day. Um, I don't know. I've, I've never really, I've never really got Three Clicks Philip's the sort of weird like in-depth stuff not that interesting to me i'd rather learn how to play the game i think it's more useful for other people to learn how to play the game especially my solo queue teammates <laughs> um and cis dream team or astralis cis dream team yeah 100 percent. especially even right P- now. even P- even peak astralis yeah i mean shiro imagine shiro simple and axile being on the same team and then just chuck like anyone else on <laughs> But I sort of spoke about the idea that maybe current Gambit is as good as or even potentially more dominant than Peak Astralis. Yeah. I, so I, I think if you were willing to even like add players to that, like it's probably better, right? Like, I don't know. Maybe just adding a simple. Although I don't really know how you add simple to, to Gambit. Like, I don't know how you do it. Like, the only player who isn't amazing is Inters. And even then, it's like it doesn't really matter who you have as the fifth player on this team. It just, just straight up doesn't matter. He must, you know, he's obviously doing something, right? Yeah. All right. So some questions, some more time oriented questions from uh, three hours ago. Uh, if the Counter Strike Major does get moved because of Sweden's ruling, where do we think it will go to? Slash, where do we want it to go to? Well, I obviously want it to stay in Sweden. Yeah, I think for me personally. I think both of us are on the stay in Sweden uh, crowd, but if it doesn't stay in Sweden, I actually think that the US would be a really good place for it to go to. And I'm I not disagree. Try- I'm not trying to be a jackass American about this. I am legitimately thinking in like straight like COVID protocols and shit because we're mostly open at this point. Like, it, I I'm from New York, right? We are fully open as a state with like vaccinations and stuff, so it would actually be a relatively safe place for them to come to. For players to come to, that's literally my only like reasoning behind this is like because you need to find a country that is w- done well enough with COVID that they'll accept players from all around the world. By November, um, the UK I mean, should be pretty much fully vaccinated as well. I think um, we're currently vaccinating like under thirties. Um, and my vaccination, my first vaccination is booked in four days, I think. Um, and then my second one's in September, so I should be fully vaccinated. 
by then, I imagine most people will be fully vaccinated uh, by November here. So that I mean, would be I'm fine. Good. And obviously we'll I'm good for the UK. Me. I've been to the UK before. I'm good for another trip. Let's go. <laughs> well, yeah, but I'd also, I mean, other than that, I'd like to go somewhere I've never been before. I mean, Denmark would be pretty fun. Um, or even somewhere more east, like a Croatia or a Czech Republic, or a Czechia would be awesome. Um, I want to go there. So I think the Prague major cool. would be cool. Yeah, a major in Prague would be. Or, uh, you know, like, yeah, I, 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 any of those sort of big cities in Eastern Europe would be pretty fun. You get a Ubiana. Bosnia major. You don't want to Bosnia. <laughs> um, Bosnia is... I, parts of Bosnia are nice, don't get me wrong. But it's, it's pretty... It's not as nice as the other Eastern European countries for plenty of you know, socio-political reasons. Got it. Um, I'm also still kind of oddied out by the fact that Valve has never had a major in, like, the Pacific Northwest, which is where Valve is based. I feel like that's a really easy opportunity. And plus, you've got Vancouver and Seattle and Portland there, and there's plenty of places to do it. Um, I think that would that on its own would just be a cool thing. I, I wish they had done it. I think like the time the zone major. is more of an issue when it goes West Coast. Yeah. Time zone becomes a real problem for time zone for Europe. World. Yeah, it, it is, um, which is unfortunate. I think uh, what would be really fun is if they had it in like somewhere really tropical. Like a Jamaica or you know Barbados, something like that. Yeah, you That'd do the cool. the Bermuda Major. Yeah, I mean uh, that's where Flamey is, right? Yeah, and seas at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> I and th- I I couldn't think of anyone else for that joke because I need somebody quick who's who's yeah. gone missing. Flamey, haven't seen him in a while. <laughs> All right, and then the last question that we've got is why easy. So I didn't wasn't sure if he was asking like why AZ or if he's asking like why AZ. I assume you know I mean? it's the first. I assume, I assume it's why I don't know. best player in the world. Isn't it? The first game I ever uh, remember watching was Phase Clan versus I don't remember who they were playing, but I remember uh, I wanted to like Phase Clan because I thought that would wind people up. Um, and when I watched them, I was like, this AZ kid, he's got something about him, and this rain guy keeps baiting him. So I just decided <laughs> to stand AZ, and uh, for a while I was, you know, permanently flaming rain. I mean, to I some mean, extent, I still am, but now it's more <laughs> justified. So, <laughs> yeah, right. that, that's basically it. Well, that's, I think that's it from us today. Um, please remember to follow us on Twitter at, at Logan Rahab, at AZ Eskin, at TLDR, at RetLDR. We will be back next week with pre-Cologne, I think. It's the plan for next week. Hell yeah. yeah. There might be some big news by then. Uh, maybe we'll know more about the Major. Maybe we'll know where AZ is going. Or, or not. not. Going, or, <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right. Thank you guys for listening. Maybe we'll know where Flamey is. (laughs) See you all next week.